much more here in 2024. It was a rainy start to the weekend, so the schedule shifted in the Tennessee Classic, but it has yielded a beautiful Saturday night for softball. Here we go. Ball one in the dirt to Vanessa Alexander. The junior middle infielder. Just her fifth start of the season because this is a Brown team that hasn't played a whole lot of games this year. Yeah. Two balls and no strikes. Orsini rocks home the 2 0. And therefore a called strike, 2 and 1. Seeing a little bit of indecisiveness there by the batter. You know, this is only their second week out. The Ivy League starts two weeks behind everyone else, and they probably didn't prepare to see Orsini. I think they weren't expecting that. Off speed in for a strike. Yeah, Charlie Orsini has been a relief specialist for the most part for Tennessee, kind of third in that rotation behind Gottschall and Pickens. Carlin Pickens got the start in the win in game one. Peyton Gottschall you know, likely be in the circle tomorrow, so it's Orsini's ball right now. And we've still got a 2-2 count. Two in, ground ball up the middle, fall to her left, and there's one out in the top of the first. A little bit of a different look defensively here in the nightcap for Tennessee. That is Fall, the true freshman at shortstop, so still the captain of the infield. Taylor Panel moves to first base as Katsoyanopoulos shifts behind the dish, and Alana Leach getting the start out in right field for Karen Weekly's squad. One up, one down for Orsini. Jasmine Shaw, the next up. And goes after the first pitch. Soft contact, shallow center. Malloy ranges and collects. Two down. Base is empty and two out for Laurel Moody in the three spot. Moody considered one of the smartest hitters here for Brown. She's very calm. She's very patient. She has the ability to foul off pitches. Uh, she had home run opening weekend, had two warning track power hits. Uh, let's see if she can get the ball out to the grass here. Yeah, tied for the team high with hits last season at 31 in an honorable mention all Ivy League 2023. I think 250 to begin the year. You touched on it being just Brown's second weekend. So the Bears three and three compared to nine and four for Tennessee, a team that's had four games canceled due to weather. So the Lady Vols with almost a dozen more contests under their belt. Through the left side of the infield, that is a two-out base hit. Laurel Moody finds a two-out single in the top of the first. So a two-out base runner for the Bears here in the opening frame. Dara English in the cleanup spot. Takes ball one in the dirt. English, a, double, a doubles hitter with home run potential. Sometimes she just misses. Coach mentioned that they need her to just not miss. Off speed misses, two balls and no strikes. Still hitting a clean 300 to begin the season for English. That is one of five bats in this starting nine for Brown. That's over 300. Waves and misses there. 
Nice pitch by Orsini. She's working pretty quick on her pitch clock right now. The pitch clock is set for 20 seconds for those of you that can't see it. In the outfield, there's a clock. It counts down by 20 seconds. The pitcher has 20 seconds to deliver the pitch. The batter has 10 seconds to get back in the box to hit. And Orsini is averaging between 10 to 15 seconds every pitch. That one misses, low one in, three balls and a strike. That's something Tennessee really worked hard on in the fall. Garen Weekly said they were pushing the tempo for their pitches so much so that they actually went a little bit too fast. Catchers were calling time just five seconds into the clock when they had 15 left. And there you go. You just saw another example of that right there. I'm sure Orsini's pretty jazzed up with the start here. It's exciting. You can see her breathing a little hard out there. She's got a lot of emotion, a lot of energy. 3-1, lazily hit to first, panel smothers and steps on the bag. So Orsini works around the two-out single and finishes a clean top of the first. Lady Vols come into the plate for the first time on the other side. Tennessee offense that begins with the All-American Kiki Malloy at the top. Zeta Pooney moves up to the cleanup spot. She delivered that walk-off three-run homer for a run roll victory against Stetson just over an hour ago. So Malloy climbs in, one ball and no strikes as Guevara peeks in for the side and fires. Kiki Malloy picking up where she left off, now hitting 300 this season, belted her fourth home run of the year on the first pitch she saw in the fifth against Stetson. Waits back and fouls it off there. High and out. Three balls and a strike. Brown really living off of two pitchers right now. They've had some injuries, and Guevara's carrying a lot of the load for this team. Ball four to the speedy Kiki Malone. Player with all five tools in all caps. Look out. Off runner aboard for Riley West. West 0 for 2 against Stetson. Malloy goes running, swipes second, and now is hustling to third. Two free bags for Kiki Malloy. First run is 60 feet away. And there's that green light special for Malloy. She has the green light to steal anytime she wants. Brown has yet to throw out a runner this season. You see Malloy take advantage. She goes for the steal, no hesitation, pops up, sees the ball and she's on her way. She's the type of base runner that the coach is not telling her to come to the next base. She's only there to tell her to stop. She lets her run free. Now the eighth stolen bag of the season for Malloy. Tennessee quickly in business here in the home first. Riley West, the senior left fielder. Settled in as an everyday player down the stretch for Tennessee last season, a year that ended in Oklahoma City and wound up in the national semifinals. Lady Vols made their first trip to the Women's College World Series since 2015. They won the SEC regular season, a tournament title. First time they did both those things in the same year in program history. And boo, they return a lot of pop. This is a team that is hungry for more despite all that success. Strike three swinging, first K for Guevara as West chases. Nice job, curveball off the plate, expanding the strike zone. Guevara picks up her first K. Malloy still on third. One out now for McKenna Gibson. 
lunges after the first pitch, tailing foul. Rodriguez watches it fall. Nothing in one. Malloy on first. You'll see her an angle down if the ball's on the ground. She's going to be off going home. This is tough to defend. The, the defense doesn't want to play too shallow because you know, the, the batter's going to hit it hard, but they also can't play too, too deep with Malloy's speed on third. Thought about going, but thought better. Yeah, it's such an interesting tap dance. you got to play with the All-American speedster. And then respecting the bat at the plate, McKenna Gibson coming off of a breakout 2023. Ended up being a second-team All-American for Karen Weekly. Was All-Region, All-Conference. Center career high, hitting 362 with almost 60 hits. And tied for that Tennessee high last year with 60 runs batted in. Malloy showing a lot of maturity there, knowing that she doesn't need to go and potentially get thrown out at home with such a stud hitter up. Runners in scoring position, you don't need to risk it. Catches piece of the outside corner, two and two. Hard not to be antsy at third if you're Kiki. I think she knows that at any at any time this ball could go over the fence. Right on cue, a boo blast. McKenna Gibson, Apo Taco, and Tennessee lunges to a two nothing lead. I may be a fortune teller. extension on an outside pitch, a curveball it just missed up. And that's what that's what a good hitter does. They hunt their pitch. She's noticed the tendency of Gavara to go outside. Gavara misses up. The pitch is a little bit elevated, and Boo takes advantage of that. Second home run of the season after what was a slower start by her standards. And McKenna Gibson gives Tennessee a two-month cushion here in the bottom of the first. Bags clear, one down for Zeta Pooney. Who takes ball one? Hey, Boop, by, by the way, what are those Powerball numbers you're saying you like <laughs> tonight? <laughs> Two balls and no strikes to Pooney. And well, she delivered the exclamation mark ending. Tennessee already in front, 5 0 in the home fifth. A left field laser. Three run homer for Zeta Pooney to walk it off in game one for Tennessee. And now quickly in front, three balls and no strikes. This is a huge at bat for the tempo of the game. Anytime that you're following up a home run, it's that batter's job to keep the pitcher off balance, to make her work fast, to make her produce another home run or produce a walk. This is a big at bat. One that results in a four pitch free pass. Or Alexis Guevara here. How do you slow things down? You're just trying to eliminate the back-to-backs. You know, you gave up a home run, you gave up a walk, both things that your def your defense cannot defend. She just needs to put the ball in the zone, let her defense work. Again, this goes back to this is only week two for Brown. She hasn't had time to work through some of these yips that she's had, you know, in preseason, and uh, we're seeing that we're seeing that play out right now. She'll bounce back. Katie Taylor enters. To pinch run over at first. And give her really one of the most experienced arms coming back for this Brown team. One on one out for Destiny Rodriguez, the Tennessee sophomore. Taylor takes off and is caught. Mo Castens with the cannon. Great job by the catcher of picking up her pitcher. Tennessee caught ceiling for just the second time this Karen season. Karen Weekly calling for the for the video playback. Umpires didn't see it until now. Yeah, and now they unfortunately called timeout because she signaled to her ears that she wanted to do the video replay on the steal. Oh man, what a wacky sequence of events. Yeah, it was an opposite field double for Destiny Rodriguez that'll get erased. Because we will half over there, and here we go. Moment of truth. Ball 
on the field being upheld. So the first runner caught still in this season for the Brown Bears, two out. Again, you're seeing that curveball elevated. Catcher got an advantage, got to stand up because the pitch was a little high, got her out of the crouch quick and able to make a good throw. One ball and no strikes. Base is empty, two down for Rodriguez. And she takes a strike on the inside corner. Rodriguez seems to be, sorry, Guevara seems to be forcing the pitch a little bit. She just needs to relax. She's a pitcher that's not going to rely on velocity. She needs to get her mechanics on point, let her pitches spin, and just hit her spots. Jammed Rodriguez, hustling in. Shao snares it for the out. And the side is retired in the first. Tennessee, J Taylor Panel begins the home second and takes a strike on the inside corner. And on top of being a great coach, Coach Weekly also has a law degree, just like assistant coach Laura Leonetti for Brown. No balls and two strikes. 
didn't see a whole lot of deliberation between the two sides on that challenge, but there's still time. Ball and two strikes. Guevara back to work for Brown in the circle. Gave up two runs in the first. That was a two-run opposite field homer from McKenna Gibson. That got some help from the defense to get out of it. One, two. Laddered upstairs. Two balls and two strikes. Really seeing Guevara try to work the outside of the plate. Haven't seen much on the inside. She does have a back door and a screwball, but we haven't seen that yet. Swing and a miss. Panel goes chasing. Second strikeout for Guevara. Rise ball out, just under it. Great pitch. Alana Leach getting the start. The freshman from the Woodlands just outside of Houston. In Texas, one of two leeches on the team. Her and her twin sister Gabby both choosing to follow their older sister's footsteps and come to Knoxville, play for Karen Weekly. Pops it up, and the bunt is fielded by Moody on a basket catch. Bouncing back nicely here in the second. It's two quick outs and faces Julia Katsoyanopoulos with the bases empty. There's that backdoor curve we've been looking for. Just barely missed on the offering. The 1-0. Pretty pitch, called strike. Kind of a bulldog mentality in the circle for Alexis Guevara. Pritch is out there with a lot of confidence, trusts her offense to back her up. Seems like she's getting back in her groove. She yeah. did her job, she got the lead off out. She's got to let the defense work. If they're gonna have any chance at winning this game, they've got to get the lead off out and they've got to make these hitters chase pitches off the plate. Got Katsoyanopoulos to chase upstairs there. The one, two pitch, fouled off, we'll try it again. Tennessee is a tough lineup to pitch to. Not only do they have power and they have speed, they have a lot of different swings. There is no cookie cutter swing in the Tennessee program. Coach Malbo does a great job of coaching the hitters individually. That's tipped into the mid strike three. Chased off the plate and a couple strike catch. Touched earlier, Boo, on they got to start a couple weeks later than the rest of the country. So this is just the second weekend of action. And Kate Wheeler, despite some of those challenges, fielding together a nice team that's hanging in here, heading to the third. Yeah, you know, they, they really feed off of that. They only have three coaches on staff right now. Tennessee has four. They may not have some of the resources that the SEC has, but they talk about really going four for 40. They're committing to this Brown education, and they know they're going to be set up for life for the next 40 years. Yeah, I believe not allowed to give athletic scholarships. So... Certainly a lot of things to consider when you're out on the recruiting trail as Brianna Rodriguez leads off the visiting third. Eight, nine, and one due up for the Bears as Charlie Orsini continues to work for Tennessee. Break even offer. Foul ball. In the air to right, Leach on the way back and tracks it down in front of the track. Thank <laughs> you. 
Base is empty as the freshman Casey Kluss strides in. In search of her first collegiate hit, fourth start for the freshman. Line to Gibson. Two down. Orsini doing a nice job of getting, getting her defense some balls to play with right here, softballs to play with. So it turns back over to the top of the order and Vanessa Alexander. Grounded out her first time up and waves and misses strike one. Alexander, known as a hitter that can battle, can work the counts, hits up the middle or puts it in the hole. Finds herself in a hole here. No balls and two strikes. Orsini working quickly, working well. Has yielded just one base hit, a two-out single back in the first, smooth sailing otherwise. In search of her third strikeout of the night, the 0-2 on the way. Off the helmet. And Alexander trots down to first. Looks to be okay. Good to see. That one really plunked her. Ends up being a two-out base runner for Brown. And Jasmine Shaw. That's in the dirt, smothered by Katsoyanopoulos. Shaw, the everyday first baseman. Came in hitting over 300, 0 for 1. Flying out to center field back in the first. In the air the other way, could be trouble. Leach on the run and can't make the catch. It's off the glove. Alexander windmilled around third and she scores. Brown is on the board. Jasmine Shaw providing the damage. Shaw does a great job of letting that pitch travel deep, going opposite with it, coming up clutch. Leach just missed that. So it's a 2-1 game, RBI double for Jasmine Shaw, her fourth double of the season to lead the team. And Picks up Ribby number three to cut the gap to one. Sure, she is a master at cleaning up messes, and that's what she's going to do here. And here it's a runner in scoring position. As Gottschall comes on in relief for the fourth time this year. First pitch, fly ball to left. West is there, and the side is retired. It's about as efficient as it gets. One pitch, one out. Gaucho gets out of the third, but we've got a one-run game in Knoxville. As Tennessee plays at home for the first time in 2024, hosting the Tennessee Classic for the 15th time now in program history. Lady Vols already a winner today. Brown looking for its first win of the weekend as Bella Faw fouls off the first pitch of the home third. Brown's coach Wheeler was talking about a big theme for them is to play with swag, have confidence. They talked a little bit about how coach Mark Correa talks about a Superman, superhero pose, and they are definitely showing a little bit more confidence, a little more swag. Ball sends it down the right field line. Rodriguez chasing, can't get there quick enough. No balls and two strikes. Bella Fall, the true freshman from Sugar Hill, Georgia, just outside Atlanta, played for 7A powerhouse in the state of Georgia. North Gwinnett led those Bulldogs to a state title. And now the everyday shortstop for the number eight team in the country. Up the middle, her fellow shortstop, English, picks up the first out of the third.
Turns the ball back to the top of the order, and Kiki Malloy, who is always dangerous. Earlier today against Stetson, went deep to the deepest part of the park, her fourth home run of the season. She extended the reign at the top. Now 60 home runs in her Tennessee career, the all-time leader in Lady Vol history. And Boo, she's done it in a bunch fewer games. Megan Gregg, the previous record holder, hit her 57 in 245 games, but it took Kiki just 207 contests to get that record-breaking 58th dinger. Kiki did a great job of working the count in her first at bat, willing to take the walk. She knows some of the tendencies now. Let's see how she attacks. Seems to be hunting for the outside pitch. He's taking two pitches inside right there. Finds herself in front, two balls and a strike. Guevara back to work for Brown in the third. 2-1 offer. Ripped up the middle to center field. Is it high enough and deep enough off the base of the wall? Malloy hustling around second. No signs of slowing down. It's a stand-up triple. This swing. Malloy just attacking that outside pitch, extending, taking off quick, not doing a home run trot, not big leaking it, taking off, knowing she's going to have to run hard, gets all the way to third, fired up, ready to get this offense going. Second three-bagger of the season for the speedy Kiki Malloy. In there standing up with plenty of time to spare. And a one-out extra base hit puts her in prime position for Riley West. That's going to be three strikeout victims for Guevara here early. Yeah, she takes ball one high. Guevara spins home the 2-0. Just down three balls and no strikes. And we'll see if Coach Weekly lets her swing away 3-0. Takes all the way, strike that clips the outside corner. Count. Do a little of that superhero pose with Guevara in the circle. Certainly not backing down. Trying to wiggle out of a jam here. Payoff pitch on the way. West takes strike three looking. Miscommunication. That was just the second out of the inning, but Brown able to survive it. It's a backwards K in the book. That is a big strikeout, low rise, tickling right under her elbows. Catcher thinks it's out number three. Good thing the pitcher is paying attention. McKenna Gibson digs in. Goes the other way. That is gap power. Opposite field, double for McKenna Gibson. Drives home Malloy, and Tennessee's lead is 3-1 in the third. Gibson coming up, taking advantage of that pitch that missed a little bit of over the plate. These Tennessee hitters, you can't give them anything that's going to touch white on the plate or they're going to take advantage of it. Gibson has driven home all three runs for Tennessee today. They lifted for Jackie Kirkpatrick on a pinch run. hitters make a bar bring the ball back into the zone they chased a little bit earlier in the game chase some pitches off the plate now they're making her throw strikes they seem like they're being um, a little conservative but they're making her throw pitches in the zone so that they can hit for power and 
Just three hits in the game for Tennessee. All have gone for extra bases. A double, a triple, and a home run. Adds up to 3-1 Tennessee as Zeta Pooney takes ball one. Pooney walked her first time up. Waited on it, deposits it to center field. Kirkpatrick windmilled around third. She'll score, Pooney to second, 4-1 Tennessee. This is a great piece of hitting. Good hitters can drive any pitch up the middle, and Pooney does that right there. The Lady Vaughn Locos on their feet. RBI single for Zeta Pooney. Seventh run batted in this season. And Tennessee has done some two out damage here in the home third. Pooney in scoring position for Destiny Rodriguez. Fouled out down the first baseline or first trip. Really like the presence of these Tennessee hitters. They never look scared. They always look like they're in control. They're setting the pace. They've got a great pre-pitch at bat routine. Ibarra's throwing anywhere from 60 to 61. That's somewhat of a low speed, kind of average speed. They really have to sit back and they're doing a good job of just driving the ball in the gap. Rodriguez, high in the air, left field, gone! Just carries out of the yard, Destiny Rodriguez. Third home run of the season at Tennessee has opened up a 6-1 lead. Lady Vols, that's what they do, they hit the runs. They just need to bounce back, there's a lot of game left. Taylor Panel drives it to left. And the two out rally continues for Tennessee. Panel with her first base knock of the night. Guevara coming in with the changeup, trying to mix things up. Unfortunately, hitting is contagious. Once you start hitting, that bat keeps getting passed and passed and passed. The hitters are coming up there with confidence. They need to slow the game down. All the damage being done here with two out in the inning. There was a one out triple by Kiki Malloy, but then a strikeout of Riley West, and Guevara was on the doorstep of getting out of it. But a string of hits for Tennessee has opened up a five run lead in the third. Strike one to Alana Leach. There we go, a little smile from Ibarra. Sometimes when you're pitching and they're getting hits back to back, it can feel like it's an island out there as a pitcher. You might feel like there's no one on the field with you. She just needs to settle in, throw her game. Got plenty of time for her hitters to come back up, score her some runs. One ball and two strikes, runner on first. Two down here in the bottom of the third. 60th pitch is strike three, swinging fifth strikeout for a CC, 10th in the nation. When your hitters put up runs, it just gives you a lot of confidence as a pitcher. You can see Peyton out there. She's singing the song. She's got her swag. She's nice and relaxed. She knows that she's got great offense behind her. All she's got to do is pitch the ball, let the defense work. Fires a first pitch strike to Dara English. Heart of the order, four, five, and six due up for Brown here in the fourth. Gonzo came on through the last pitch of the third, got out of it. 
And now back to work with a clean inning and a five-run cushion. She powers it by, nothing in two. And this is what we're talking about when we talk about pitch efficiency. Two pitches, two strikes. She knows her zone. Now she's going to get her to chase. She's got her set up nicely. Almost had that one. I love seeing lefty catchers. It's like seeing a mermaid. I don't <laughs> see them very often. Unicorn mermaid, just rare. Love it. Outside, one ball and two strikes. Yeah, Julia Kitsuanopoulos behind the plate, catching Gottschall right now. And Never caught before coming to Tennessee, but that was a need last season for the Lady Vols. Has such a so high softball IQ and told Karen Weekly and company, yeah, put me back there. Jam shot to fall, one out. For young pitchers watching this, notice how Peyton calls out her defense, tells him good job. She's communicating with the first baseman on most pitches. You want to be the kind of pitcher that defense wants to play behind you. Just pounding the zone early in the count. Great job. Strike one to Macy Borowski. 0 for 1 with a strikeout. Two hops to Gibson on the short hop. Fires to first, two down. This is a great job by Gibson, taking that front angle, going in front of shortstop. Shuffle, shuffle, easy day at the park. Two quick outs recorded by Gottschall as Lily Berlinger climbs in and takes strike one. Peyton Gottschall in her second season now at Tennessee came in after a decorated three seasons at Bowling Green. It was the MAC Pitcher of the Year. And did not waste any time adapting into the Lady Ball system. Karen Weekly said she had great synergy with the team from the jump. And now she is the leader in the circle this season, playing out her graduate season. One and two. Coach Beeler describes Lily as a sea ball, hit ball type of hitter. Wants her to have a little bit more of an approach when she comes up. Some hitters, some ponies just run free. You gotta let them run. She seems to be doing okay. She looks aggressive. Let's see if she swings here. Flips it in the air. Panel. Retires the side. Perfect top of the fourth four. She throws between 54 to 55. She's known as kind of a spinner. I think Coach Wheeler's plan here is to just try to keep the hitters off balance, change speeds and make them get on the front foot and hopefully keep some grounders, get the ball inside the park. No more home runs. First appearance of the season as Aguirre fires a first pitch strike to Julia Katsoyanopoulos, eight, nine, and one in the Tennessee order. Dr. G. Soyanopoulos down on strikes the first time up. And the 0 1 from Aguirre. Catches the plate, nothing in two. There's that off-speed curve that we talked about, floating the ball off the plate. For those of you, that, for those of you that haven't hit a softball, when the pitch is traveling outside, especially as a righty, so like on that pitch, it's floating away from home plate. It appears to be slower, and then you put on top of that an off-speed curve. Now it's even more slow. So now you're trying to hunt three different speeds. You've got a curve, you've got a changeup, and you've got an off-speed. It can be a big challenge for the hitter. And there's the changeup. Results in a grounder to second, quickly to first, Alexander. Nice hustle. 
Change up, chopper to second. Nice hustle, infield single. Yeah, base hit for Julia Katsoyanopoulos. And right now, no question coming in from the Brown dugout. And this is where you really need your defense as the Brown pitcher. You really need your defense to play behind you. Um, you know, you're you're coming off the injury list. It's your first time pitching in 2024. You get a ground ball. We need you to charge that ball, get the out, and give you a little more confidence on the mound to work your pitches. Pinch hitter coming to the plate for Tennessee, Cameron Sarvis, the sophomore from Gray, Tennessee. Had minimal action last season for the Lady Vols, but getting some playing time here in her home state tonight. Goes after the first pitch and skies it into the night and it finds the ground. Little defensive mishap there. That's frustrating, you know, as, as the pitcher, you're just trying to get out. You're trying to keep your team in this game, trying to give your team an opportunity to get back up and be able to fight and not get run rolled. And lack of communication, ball drops in. And again, it goes back to what we talk about. This is only their second week in playing. Um, communication mishap. And, you know, you hate to see what happens after a foul ball because a lot of times you open up that door, good teams are going to take advantage of it. 0-1 pitch. Sarvis getting into her seventh game of the season. Three for six early this season, so clean 500 at the plate. Trying to better that here. One ball and one strike. Runner on, nobody out in the home fourth. Ripped in the air, deep right center field. Rodriguez on the way back. One hops off the wall. Katsoyanopoulos held up at third, two in scoring position with nobody out in the fourth. Nice piece of hitting going Papa with this ball. Look at that base running. Outfielder's on the run, so is the runner. No hesitation. She knows her speed. She knows if they come up with a catch, she can get back. Because of that heads up base running, she gets an extra base to third instead of being stuck in second. Great job. First extra base hit of the season for Cameron Sarvis. And she delivers here in the bottom of the fourth. And in your head, you're starting to hear dun dun dun, Kiki Malloy stepping up. You know, you're hoping when you face a leadoff batter that someone with a high average, and Kiki comes up, not only has a high average, but she's a big home run hitter. This is not who you want to face with runners on second and third. Aguirre deals, and Malloy takes ball one. One for one, a triple and a walk. Couple of runs scored for Kiki Malloy tonight. Two in scoring position with nobody out. 1-0 pitch. junker as a pitcher uh, and I mean that obviously with respect but she throws a lot of junk she throws three different speeds uh, Tennessee is doesn't seem to be phased by it they're staying disciplined they're really sitting back the key here as a hitter is to choose one speed you can't defend three speeds you got to choose one speed stay patient and hunt that pitch hunting there rifled up the middle for Kiki Malloy Katsoyanopoulos in fall behind her a two RBI single for Kiki Malloy 8-1 Lady Vols Coach Malvo has to be really happy with Kiki Malloy here, sitting back, driving that ball straight up the middle. Almost sniped the pitcher on the line drive. Hitting, all about rhythm and timing. Let's see if Kiki Malloy has the green light here. Didn't use it there. Does already have a stolen base in this one. And Riley West digs in looking for her first hit of the night. Good 
There goes Malloy, throw to second, not in time. Off the heel and maybe fortunately for the Bears gets bounced back down into play off the chest of you Kim see the Kasady. umpire. What do you want me to do? I'm part of the field. I'm, I'm trying to be set up. <laughs> Catcher throwing from her knees, bounces the ball. Malloy gets up quick. Nice reaction there. So Malloy in scoring position. 2 0 pitch to West is low. Geary still hunting for the first out of the fourth. 3 0 on the way in. There's a strike. West has struck out twice so far tonight, but she's coming into this weekend hitting 441. I mean, she's due. She's overdue. This is going to be a good at bat for her. Let's see what Brown throws her to try to keep her off balance. Two on for Tennessee. West aboard for the first time. Well, this is how the scoring started. It was the bottom of the first and an opposite field blast for McKenna Gibson. So her second home run of the season, open the scoring. And she skies this to shallow left center field. Berlinger coming on and makes the catch. And the first down recorded here in the bottom of the fourth. One down for Zeta Pooney. Nice change up there. Again, just really, really like the discipline of the Lady Balls hitters. They're not scared to take strikes if it's not the pitch that they're looking for. They definitely have a plan. They know what they're going up there for. They're confident in what they're hunting. And they're going to swing at their pitch, not at a Geary's pitch. Ball on the strike on the way in. And Pooney lays off two and one. It's been a productive first day at home for Zeta Pooney. Three run homer to end game one against Stetson. An RBI double against Brown here tonight. Awaits the 2 1. Hard to third, smothered by Moody. Steps on the back for one. It's a double play. 5-3 across the diamond, and Brown gets single year they're chipping away. I love the attitude she brings. I love the underdog mentality that her team has. They are definitely just a team that scraps away, and they're gritty. And they're only in week two. Just remember that, week two. Difference here with the Ivy League versus the SEC. The SEC, a lot of the teams, pretty much all the teams are going to make postseason with between their RPI and just uh, being high caliber teams in the Ivy League, they have to win their league most times to be able to make postseason. So they want to play these tough teams in the preseason. They want to, you know, go out and have a challenge so that by the time they get to the Ivy League play, they're ready to win. And Tennessee, the lone power five opponent on the schedule for Brown here this season, but getting some good competition against Longwood Lancers, the big South favorite this season here in Knoxville this weekend. Stetson's in town as well. Yeah, that's the team that Try to make some noise in the Ivy League. Feeling like it's coming together. First time in the Kate Wheeler tenure, a full flushed out coaching staff. They 
were able to make some additions to the facilities in the fall, really challenge their hitters to try and make it harder than it will be during the regular season. And now early in their 2024 campaign, they're squaring off against one of the best teams in college softball. In a seven run gap here though, as Mo Kestens leads off the Brown fifth. 8-1 Tennessee. Lady Balls powered by a big four run third. Gotchel back to work. And Ball they, and a strike. These Brown hitters need to just settle in. They're not going to win it with one swing. They need to come back, chip away, score some runs here, close the gap, stay in the ball game. One and two. Even at two balls and two strikes. Gottschall checks the wrist for the sign and spins it home. Swing and a miss. First strikeout of the weekend for Peyton Gottschall. Considered a fish here. This is a great job of plate expansion. Look at that ball just, ball just break off the plate. One down for Rodriguez, who takes inside ball one. Rihanna Rodriguez, 0 for 1, fly it out to right. She's out patrolling right field today, but we play a little bit of third base this season for Brown as well. One ball and one strike, and Boo going to get some action on the hot corner because she just inserted herself there during fall camp. She did. Hopped in the line at third and said, I'm going to work here. Beat me for the job. Kind of an odd position to decide to want to just start to play, <laughs> to be so close to the hitter. And it's definitely the hot corner. But I love it. Whatever the team needs, that's what you need. Rodriguez really needs to stay disciplined here. That seems to be her Achilles heel when she's not hitting is that she just tends to expand his zone a little bit. Stepping in the bucket a little bit, swinging kind of big. Just needs to shorten up. Peyton's providing the, the speed with her pitch. Let her provide the power. Just hit for contact, hit the ball up the middle. Gonchel in search of back-to-back -back Ks, and she finds them. A backwards one of the books. Nice pitch. Clips the black, pounding the zone. One ball and no strikes. Past the Bears. Go to the bench. Jamie Gross, the senior. Sprayed foul. Fourth game of the season for Gross. First time she's not starting. Two for nine early. And her final season wearing the brown and white. Peyton does a great job of just tunneling her pitches. When I say tunneling, you'll see on the ground in front of the pitcher that there is a there are white chalk lines that they have to stay in between, almost like a runway. She does a great job on every pitch just coming out and looking the same. So it's hard for the hitters to know what pitch she's going to bring because her body position is looking the same on every pitch. And then the pitch breaks different ways, up, down, different speeds. There's the pitcher's lane that we're talking about that she has to stay in between. Coming off of a 130 strikeout season. Looking to strike out the side, and she does. Three straight Ks in the top of the fifth for Peyton Gottschall. Playing at MTSU, she was first team on Conference USA a season ago, all region, and led the Blue Raiders in hitting. At the plate here to begin the home fifth for Tennessee. 
we were talking in the break about she did a great job coming in last game as a pinch hitter. You know, a little disappointed to see her not necessarily get that start in the next game, but that's just part of being in a high caliber ball program. Come in, you do your job, you might get a start, you might not. You just got to rock your roll when you get that opportunity. Aguirre back to work, spins in the 0 1 offer. Kneeler drives it the other way to the wall and it one hops off of it. Hustling into second, a lead off double for Laura Mueller, her second extra base hit of the day. And Mueller definitely pleading her case to get more at bats. Nice poke to right center field. No hesitation on the turn, quick enough to get there standing up. It's a two RBI triple off the bench in game one against Stetson. Her first crack in the nightcap is a leadoff double, and she represents the winning run for Tennessee here in the fifth. Taylor Panel takes ball one inside. Hits sharply up the middle and gets into center field. Mueller trucking her way home, and it is a game-ending single for Taylor Panel. Sends the ball up the middle. No hesitation by the base runner here. Great job. Tennessee makes quick work in the home fifth. A pair of run rule victories today for the Lady Bulls. The number 18 of the day.